looking at the tally there, it's promising that we see really uh, just 33 votes for Johnson, 22 for Jeffries. We know the, the House Democrats have been really consistent in their voting for Jeffries, so didn't expect that. But we had, by this point, I believe, during our other votes, some others that were popping up, some presents that were popping up. And we're just seeing from the Republican side votes for Johnson. So that could already be a good sign. I want to just point out very quickly, so we're pushing it ahead to Jackie's talking about what's next, spending, yeah. inquiries, funding. Uh, Johnson is sometimes described as the bookish wonky guy who gets things done. But the question out there, is he a fighter? Mm. With the fights to come, he might be able to nom get Republicans together, but can he fight? I think that's what we've got to find out from him. That's what he's going to have to show Congress and Americans. I'm medicine. guessing he has a little inner fighter inside. We'll see. That's the emerge. question. I'm just saying that's the question here. Yeah, and I mean, we all want to know because it's been three weeks without a speaker and on the lawmakers to-do list, that has grown. Jackie, you were pointing this out. When you look at what was happening before this mess, top of mind now, we have Israel. So the Congress has to deal with that. There are calls for Ukraine aid and a looming government shutdown in November. Those are all things that we think about, but there's more that's happening behind the scenes that would be a real problem if we didn't address. There's a need to update legislation for air travel, as if that isn't already enough of a mess. The farm bill needs to be updated, and not to mention, there are the inquiries into the Biden family. All of this on the back burner while this is figured out. So we want to bring in the bottom line co-host, Sean Duffy. He joins us now. Sean, can we finally get back to business? Is this vote going to be final today? What, what are you thinking? Give us your reaction. Well, so, for, so you look at the vote totals right now, you don't have any no's or others uh, in the vote tally right now, which is impressive. So here's what's happened. Uh, a lot, everyone had their own idea in Congress, what direction they wanted to go. Do they want a moderate, uh, a rhino, a conservative? Um, and after you've gone through this for over three weeks, people are exhausted. They've gone through a number of different rounds of speeches and questions and then House floor votes. And I just think after Tom Emmer yesterday uh, said, listen, I'm not going to go to the floor. If, you don't, if I don't have the 217, we'll go somewhere else. Mike Johnson was the next highest vote getter. That exhaustion is breeding compromise now in the House. And I think you're going to see mm -hmm. Mike Johnson now become the speaker, which was interesting. No one was talking about Mike Johnson three weeks ago or two weeks ago or even one week ago. Mm -hmm. He was relatively unknown, low level in leadership. And the question, I think Brian made this point. The question is, the Speaker of the House with another you know, team of members are going to have to go negotiate with Chuck Schumer, negotiate with Joe Biden and his team. Does he have the gravitas and the tact to negotiate on behalf of the House and get the things done that they want done? They, they want to cut spending, but they're 23, 23 days away until the CR expires. FISA reform. We saw the abuses of FISA under Donald Trump. That's going to be reauthorized. Can they get the reform on FISA? And it'll test Mike Johnson, who hasn't had necessarily the experience, you know, working on these teams before. And now he's going to have the head position. But I think he gets it today. Sean, can I just ask you um, how you feel about how this has played out? When we went through this in January with Kevin McCarthy, that was one thing. It was settled pretty quickly. Fine. Everybody moved on. But now we're going through this all over again. And my fear is that um, sort of having this public fight and, and the Republicans clawing at each other just takes a position that was already fragile and, and a marginal lead in the House and, and brings them down even further. I'm curious if you think that this is going to leave a black eye. Yeah, Jackie, that, that's a great question because not only if, if, they, if, if they agree on Johnson today, and it looks like that's going to happen, the question becomes how do they unify with a four or five seat majority on really big issues? Someone mentioned the farm bill, mm -hmm. um, on spending, on Hunter Biden, on an impeachment. Those are really tenuous issues, and the fractures are real. The anger and frustration are real in the Republican conference. Can they rally together? and get things done. And I don't think the American voter will hold it against this Congress for the three weeks we've gone through right now, because it's an eternity away until the next election. But if they can't deliver on real policies, they can't push back on a Democrat Senate and Joe Biden, they will be held to account. And so they got to put, yeah. put the raw emotions away and start to work together to figure out a path forward on the big issues on the horizon. Otherwise, um, all the votes, all the money that were given to these people to lead will be for naught. Sean, we saw a clip of Matt Gates earlier saying this is transformational. Mike, uh, Mike Johnson's speakership is transformational. That's the word he used. 
Now, I don't know. That sounds like kind of an overstatement to me, Sean. I don't know if Mike Johnson is your transformational guy, and that's not a knock against him, but you kind of wonder, from Matt Gates' perspective, what are you getting out of this new speaker? And does it really change the trajectory? And I, I suspect we're going to find out no. really quickly because the same issues are going to come up. So is Gates capitulating? because he feels bad about how this has played out. Are we going to get something out of Johnson we don't expect? No, listen, Gates is covering his backside, right? He brought, he brought us this three, three and a half weeks of hell in the Congress, and he's, he would vote for anybody but Kevin McCarthy right now because, you know, everyone was looking at him. It's his fault. Um, but it's not transformational because here's the deal. The Speaker really has limited authority right now. When you have a four- or five-seat majority in the House, there's not much that the Speaker can do. It's, it's, it's the possible, uh, it's, the, it's the art of the possible in the House. What can you actually get done? What can you get 217, 218 members to agree to? And so, yeah, the Speaker can lay out a vision and a strategy, but you need all these people following you, and if they don't come in line, your Speakership doesn't really mean anything. So, uh, again, this is not going to transform anything. It's the conference that's going to lead the Speaker. The Speaker is not mm. going to lead the conference. Yeah, well, speaking of that coming in line, I, I think it's important to note that still at this point, there have been no defections. We're looking at 62 votes for Johnson. Sean, you know, it seems like those closed doors meetings, they went fairly well because we're not seeing any of those defections. You've been there. Can you give us some light on that process? What were these folks going through so that when they got to the to the floor today, they could be a unified front? Well, so, so the, the, these meetings are really long, and it seems intriguing as we watch from the outside, you know, what the Republican conference is going through with the different rounds of votes and the silent ballots and the speeches. It's exhausting. Um, they're in there. They have some sandwiches and some coffee and maybe some soda. Um, but you do this hours on end, day after day, late nights, early mornings, and at one point they cry uncle, go, enough. Okay, we, at some point we have, if, if there's, there's no one left in line, We'll take Johnson. That's fine. He's, he's the least offensive one we brought up so far. Uh, but stop the pain and let's get back to the work of governing. I would just say if, if, if Mike Johnson had come up yesterday, he would have failed. He wouldn't have got the votes yesterday. And if Tom Emmer had come up today, he would have got the votes. It's just huh. the exhaustion of the House has brought them to compromise. It's not actually Mike Johnson himself. They, they, they would take Peter Pan probably today um, if he was running for speaker. So there were eight Republicans who ousted McCarthy voting against him and, and basically saying that, you know, he pandered to the other side, Sean. You know, his counter argument to that would be sometimes you have to make deals to get things done and you can't always draw a line in the sand, especially when it comes to governing. Do you think that Mike Johnson will have the backbone that those eight specifically, you know, we just talked about Matt Gates, and do you think he will have the backbone that they were hoping that he would have or that they were hoping that whoever so replaced McCarthy would have? Another great question, Jackie. So here's, <laughs> they're just political positioning, Jackie, what they're doing, these, these eight are. So it, it, the Republicans in the House wanted to cut spending. They tried to cut spending. They couldn't pass a bill to fund the government and cut, and cut spending. And so what Kevin McCarthy did was say, hey, Senate Republicans, don't vote with Chuck Schumer Let's do a CR, give us a continuing resolution, fund the government for 45 days, and give us time to figure out how we're going to cut spending as a team. So we extended funding for 45 days to save the House. If the House had shut down the government without passing a bill on how you're going to fund the government, that's a political disaster. Um, so he was saying, hey, let's, let's give us some time to actually get a bill on the table that we pass our vision. Really smart of McCarthy. And this just presented an opportunity to Gates to use that as a wedge and a leverage to take McCarthy mm. out because it's personal. It wasn't really on policy. Um, yep. Just if you think back to the to, to the to the uh, to the debt limit, House Republicans put a vision out to raise the debt limit and cut spending, and they could have that fight with the Senate and Joe Biden because they had passed a bill. Mm. Here, when you don't pass a bill and the government shuts down, the incoming fire is great. The politics of that are horrible. So Kevin McCarthy did the right thing, and the eight, you know, threw him out for it. Mm. We're looking at a screen that we haven't seen in this race yet, which is a screen <laughs> with two names that have votes and <laughs> all zeros on the rest of the board. A very new development there. Sean, you mentioned something just a second ago I want to come back to. You said a lot of this is timing. Look, if it was Johnson yesterday, he'd be a no-go. If it was Emmer today, he'd be a go. 
But I'm interested in your take on former President Trump's position in all of this, because with Emmer, Trump said, no, not Emmer. With Johnson, uh, President Trump came out and said, yeah, I like the guy. He, he's the right pick. How much do you think that mattered relative to the timing issue when it comes to who we're seeing votes on today? So uh, I, I like President Trump. I'm a fan of his policies. But at this stage of the process, uh, President Trump was not impacting votes one way or the other. Hmm. Um, he didn't. He, I don't think he's, he, he tanked uh, Emmer, and I don't think he lifted Johnson. Um, I think the members, were, again, were so exhausted by the process, they were looking at who can lead the conference, who can negotiate, um, whose policies and voting record in the past do I like, and President Trump, you know, I don't think was was coming into play much at all. He can he can move great numbers in a primary race, um, in a state, you know, pick one of the fifty in the country. He has he has he has say there on the Republican side, but at this point, I, I don't think he was moving the numbers mm -hmm. one way or the other. And I don't listen. I don't think conservative media was 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 piling on as well on one side or the other, and they right. didn't really move the numbers. This really was a body of men and women that had to figure out what they felt was right and then get so tired that they had to make uh, a decision. <laughs> Just another point on this. The, the, you would have never gone three weeks but for the conflict in the Middle East because this would have been the news story every day, yeah. every hour, every night, and they couldn't have st stood the backlash of all the publicity around their dysfunction. But because so much of the coverage had gone to the war, uh, to the war starting uh, Oct uh, October 7th, they were able to kind of fly under the radar with this dysfunction. Um, which I, yeah. I, I find interesting. I never thought it would go this long, yeah. and it did. But hopefully, as you mentioned, the board says no others, no one else voting present. Good sign for Johnson. Yeah, uh, Sean, you've got the insider's view on this. We appreciate it. It sounds like sometimes it just comes down to plain old running out of gas. Thanks very much, Sean Duffy.